Hi, today I want to show you how to make adjustments to your image using the Content Aware Move tool and also using a couple of the other tools you'll find within the Healing Brushes section of your toolbar. Now the Content Aware Move tool is very good for making small adjustments to an image by taking an object within it and moving it to another. Also filling up the space left behind making it look like it had never been there in the first place. Let me show you what I mean. First, I'll get the Move tool open by pressing J on the keyboard or going over to the Healing Brush section of the toolbar and scrolling down to select the Content Aware Move tool. From there, I'll just make a loose selection around what I want to move, drag it to where I want it to be, and it will do all the calculations for you. It leaves the selection, so just press Control D to deselect, and you'll see that now the blurry bird in the background has been moved and it's completely clean where it had come from and where it is. It looks perfectly natural. You can also do that with other objects. This bigger bird uh, that's more in focus in the front will do the same thing. Taking a very loose selection around it and then I will drag this over here and it takes a couple of seconds, the larger the selection you're making uh, to do its analyzation. And it will do the same thing. Where the bird was before, it will fill that area up with pixel information of what was around it. Sometimes there's a little bit of an artifact left behind that's easy to fix here. I'll just use the patch tool. And we have now a completely clean and clear sky where the bird was. And now he's moved closer to this blurry image in the background. Now you'll notice that this was a very simple example here. The background is very blue, very clean, and the tool works best with backgrounds like that. Uh, you want to try to use it where you have as little information going on around the image. Uh, it helps the tool do the job a lot easier and faster and with a lot less work you'll have to do afterwards cleaning up around the edges but it does a fairly good job now the next image we're going to work with here is a little bit more complex but a lot more fun as you can see here this image has a little bit more going on so it provides a couple of new challenges but it is easy to work around with the content aware move tool let me show you what you can do here. Let's say these um, fixtures you'll find on the tiles here, that you don't like the position that they're in. You don't like their location. You want to move them around. We're going to focus on this one here for a moment. Now with the Content Aware Move tool selected, of course, make your selection around this fixture. And in between the fixture and the grout, keep it nice and tight in between the two. Move it to your desired location. Press Control D to deselect. And it did a very nice job. Everything around the edges, around the shadowed area, and over up on the top as well looks very good. And the area left behind looks perfect, like it had never been there before. But let's say you want to move an object to a new location, but you also want to slightly change its position. You want to turn it on its side a little bit. You're going to have to make sure that up on the top your transform on drop box is selected. Now you can make your selection, move it to your desired location. Once you release the mouse you'll see the transforming box appear around your object. This gives you the ability to, once it's moved, turn it in any position that you like. You're even able to grow it or shrink it. Let's leave it the same, but we'll just turn it upside down here. And then click the check mark above. And you'll see that it did a very good job of now turning your object upside down. Uh, cleaned up the area from before, and now this new area looks like it's always been there. The only thing out of place is the shadow, which is something you can work on afterwards. 
Right now I want to talk about a couple of parts of the toolbar above, specifically structure and color. Structure works on a range of 1 through 7, while color works on a range of 0 through 10. Structure is basically an inward feathering of the selection that you make. The lower the number, the more feathering you'll find on the inside, a softer transition and a better blend. The higher the structure, the more tightly the uh, inner object will be pressed up against the selection with a harder edge. In the field of color, the lower the number, the less color information it's taking from the surrounding pixels to uh, blend inward. The higher the number, the more information you're gathering to enable a better blend. Now to show you what this all means, we're going to focus on an object up at the top right of this image here, the hole up in the plaster. Now with our tool selected, our structure is at 1. We're going to turn that all the way up to 7 here, leaving the color at 0, and making our selection around this this hole and this little area. We're going to move this down to the green section over the tile here. And you'll see that while it did clear up the area nicely above, it did not do a good job at all down here. We can obviously the, see the color difference. We can see the sharp, almost perfectly sharp edges around where the selection was made. Let's move back a couple of steps with the same uh, selection made. We're going to turn that structure back down to 1, bringing that back over to the tile. You'll see it did a little bit better in softening around the edges. Not perfect, but just a little bit better. Now what we can do is play with the color and bring in some of that green. Turning this up little bits at a time. First couple of numbers, you'll only see a little bit of a change around the edges. The higher you go, the more green it's pulling in until we get to an 8. You'll see that it has finally pulled in a lot more green, making it a bit of a better uh, transition and a better blending. We could do even better with that, turning that up to, we'll crank it all the way up to 10, and it has got all the green information that it can from the tile surrounding it. Uh, getting rid of a lot of the yellowness and making it look almost perfectly natural in the position that you put it in. Now before you deselect, you can keep playing with these numbers to get any sort of desired effect that you want here. Give me that at 10. Keep playing with the structure. And you'll notice that besides the area where the selection is, where you pulled your object from, it is also going to be altering that as well. But this is pretty good here. One other thing up above in the toolbar here, you notice under mode, the default is move, and we've seen what that can do so far. The other option here is extend. And what that basically does is, is it leaves the image behind as well. It basically makes a copy for you. So I could take this, move it to the next tile. It does get a little bit lighter since my color is all the way up at 10. I could turn that down a little bit. Oh, best we're going to get is at a 9. It's got a lot more green and it's a much lighter tone. And it's going to pull in a lot of that information. But you can make these copies and move them around. We'll take another one from here. And now we have two tiles with the same exact hole inside of it. One other thing that I want to point out here, um, let's create a new layer and step back. Let's step back a few paces and then create the new layer. Creating a new layer, have your sample all layers box checked. Basically, once you have that layer selected and active, you can now make your selections, make your movements and your adjustments, and everything will work on your new blank layer. It's non-destructive, and it will not affect the layers underneath. I'm going to put this back to move. Well, 
me deselect that and you'll notice while everything looks okay here you notice all of the information is on this new layer let's bring the background and turn the visibility of this layer off and on and you'll see that we have not done any permanent damage to the background layer you can also make finer adjustments and work with uh, parts of your image in ways that simulate other tools but with the added benefit of having the content aware fill process being used in when you're moving stuff around um, let's say here this spigot on the wall up on the tile um, I wanted to have it move somewhere where it felt more natural where it felt like it should be there's nothing on the tile itself that says a spigot should be there at least in my opinion so I want to move it over to this pipe just above it and to the left the first thing we want to do is have a new layer and we're going to zoom in here now with the content aware move tool we're going to make our selection close to the spigot itself I'm going to keep it fairly tight And once we have that, move it over, over the pipe, and spin it around, just because I felt like it. And cl clicking the check mark, we notice that the area below is still a little messy. It pulled in some information from the shadowing around, so it wasn't a perfect replacement. And also, in the selection itself, there's a lot of information missing because we have our structure set all the way down to one. There was too much feathering. So I'm going to open that up and turn the structure a little bit higher until we see the entire material come back in. And at six, we've got everything we need on the inside of our selection. We can press Control D to deselect that. Now what we want to do is finish cleaning up this area around here. For that, first start with the patch tool. I've also got sample all layers selected on the patch tool. I'm going to take this, this piece of grout along the wall where there was a crack obviously. Take that, move it over to the side and we've got that erased. We can do the same with this little section over here. Now in order to clean this area up, there's a very easy way to do this. We can get the clone stamp tool. I've got sample set for current and below, and it is clicked on aligned. Now as we're on layer one here, it's going to take information from the background layer. And I have the brush set up at 175 pixels with the hardness of zero. Pressing the Alt key on the keyboard, I'm going to center it somewhere at a crossroads of the grout. There's a good sampling place. And now moving that over till it overlays the cross section of the grout over here. Then I could start painting in the cloning. And if you feel like you don't want a repeating pattern or texture, as you see over here, you can very easily go to the patch tool, take a little piece of it, and fix it that way. And everything looks pretty good over here. Now what we want to do next is work on the spigot. But before we do that, we have to clean up this area here. See this section that we created on the new layer? we want to fix that up so we're going to take our lasso selection tool and make a selection around that and right click inside the selection choose layer via cut that that removes it from the layer one you'll notice it created it onto layer two if we turn off the visibility of that you'll notice that on layer one all we have is the spigot left behind. We're going to take layer two, 
drag it below layer one, put the visibility back on your background and layer one as well. Right click on layer two and select merge down. Now it is a permanent piece of your background layer. Back on layer one, we want to mask out some of the excess around the spigot and in between the spokes of the, of the wheel here. So we're going to create a mask. Make sure your brush is fairly small to fit in all the little nooks and crannies there and the hardness about between 80 and 85 percent. And we're going to zoom in and start painting away the excess here. And once you've given it a general uh, cleanup, make sure that the layer is active and not your layer mask, and open up the layer styles panel, choose drop shadow. Once you have a drop shadow opened, you'll notice that there are a few edges that weren't cleaned out perfectly. This makes it a lot easier to see it with the drop shadow behind. Go back to the layer mask and finish your cleanup. And the drop shadow will adapt as you clean up your image. This gives you the chance to clean up any of the little edges, any of the extra pixels that you'd brought over from the tile earlier. And at the same time, having a drop shadow, have it look a lot more natural, giving it, uh, giving it a bit more depth and helping it blend better in with the background you've moved it to. And now that you've got your cleanup job done, you can move into your layer styles here and change your drop shadow. You can either get rid of it or keep it and just change some of the settings. I'll lower the opacity a little bit. And I think it looks pretty natural here. There's a little bit extra cleanup I could do around the edges, um, but this looks pretty good for right now. Let's zoom out. And we now have the spigot moved over to the pipe. From there, we can actually take it and move it anywhere we like. I'll just keep it uh, right about there is fine. It looks good. And there you have a basic primer on some of the things that you can do with the Content Aware Move tool. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And I hope to see you again soon.